We love you, that's all. What is that? He's going to tell us he doesn't know what it's about. What? What's about? Get it. You didn't request it? What? Oh, you mean you don't know who your new partner is? Yeah. It's moments like this that make it all worthwhile. Moments of pure wonderment when virtue is finally and deservedly rewarded. Danko, a man spends too much time behind his desk, he loses touch. That's why I decided to get out on the street every now and then, get an up-to-date perspective. Not that this is out on the street riding around in a patrol car. guys have it easy. I'd like to have a dollar for every pair of shoes I wore out in this neighborhood. And this was your OB? It was. That's why I'm riding with you this morning. Looks pretty much the way it did 18 years ago when I was a rookie, too. According to the reports I've been reading, the crime rate here is lower than any other in the precinct. That's just the last six months. That can mean a lot of things. What are you trying to tell me, Danko? What you tell me? That kind of a sudden rate drop? That could mean that a protection racket had taken over. Ha! No way, Danko. I know these people too well. They'd never pay. A protection racket would never survive around here. People change, Lieutenant. So do neighborhoods. That's why we need patrol cars. We have more mobility than the men on foot. Pull over here. Hit Pull over here and park. Well, what about the radio? Request the code six, bring the walkie-talkie. We'll take a little walk. Okay. This is Ludlow 7 requesting a code six. Roger. There's two cops pulled up out front. child, a dog on this street. I didn't know personally. They're just walking down the street, yakking is all. You gonna call it off, Mike? All right, look, go let me know when they're a good long block away. Come here. Look, kid, it's your first time out. You wanna go? Go. Split. Get out of here. I didn't say that, Mac. I just thought with the cops down the street is all. All right, look. Go wait out front. When old man Stein comes to open up the joint, just be cool, huh? 
And keep your eyes peeled for those two cops. If they start getting nosy, you just make them think you're worth chasing, and we'll split in the other direction. You understand? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hey, far out, man. Hey, you know, with those two cops around here, this is gonna work a lot better. We'll teach this whole neighborhood one big lesson. Congratulations, Mr. Stein. You owe us today's collection day. I'll tell you what you'll collect. Years in jail, that's what. There's two policemen down the street. I'll get them. I'll show you, Mr. Well, Stein. Stein. You got it all wrong, Mr. Stein. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wrong. We're going to show you. You see, we got a very special kind of performance all set out for you. Go ahead, fellas. You just watch. Yeah. Just watch, Mr. Stein. How are you, Sam? Hey, it's been a long time. Patrolman Riker. <laughs> Patrolman Eddie Riker. It's good seeing you. Good seeing you. Hey, hey, hey. It's Lieutenant Riker. You, you coming back to the neighborhood? No, Sam, as much as I'd like to. How are things with you? Oh, I can't complain. Well... Take care, Sam. It's good seeing you again. You too, Eddie. You too. <laughs> you see, Mr. Stein? It's fun for us. Roy and the boys, they had themselves a good time. Did you enjoy yourself, Mr. Stein? <laughs> Mr. Stein, what a shame. Just think about, think about how much money you could have saved if you had paid us to begin with. You're a bum! You're scum from the sewer! You didn't have to say that to me, Stein. I wasn't looking for any compliments. <laughs> beaten, Lieutenant, and there's some internal injuries. Will he make it? He has a chance. He's lost some blood, and he's pretty old. 
I know he's old. I've known him for most of my life. You have? He's a decent gentleman. He used to have a fruit and vegetable stand before he had this little clothing store. He used to give me free oranges and apples when I was a kid and I couldn't afford them. Now maybe he's dying because of some punks. Well, there is something I can do about that, thanks to your husband. Mike caught one of them, you know. I'm gonna go interrogate him right now. Uh, Lieutenant, maybe, uh, you ought to wait. You think I'm going into that interrogation room to bang heads with that punk? Is that what you think? Something like that, yes. Well, Jill, I thought you knew me better than that. I do. I know you pretty well. I know how much a friend means to you. And I know how much you hurt when he hurts. I'll be in touch. Well, why were you running away? Hey, look. I can run all I want till there ain't no law against it. Anyway, I'm supposed to be a juvenile. I'm underage. You're gonna stay right here till you tell me about that beating. And why you were running away from Stein's store. No, I don't know nothing about nothing. All right? I was running from him. Why? I don't know. You see a pig, you run. I've been doing it all my life. It must be very comforting hating somebody the way you hate police officers. Gives you something to do when you're not busy busting old men's bodies. All right! You're going over to Juvenile Hall. Whenever they pick you up, you're going to stay there for a few months till you're 18. Then you're coming back here. Here! Do you understand me? Lieutenant, his mom's here. She's very upset. She wants to see you. I'm not through here yet, Webster. I think she knows you, Lieutenant. Uh, she says she wants to see an Eddie Riker. Phillips. The boy's name is Phillips. I don't know any woman named Phillips. She says uh, her name used to be Molly Clark. Molly? Hello, Eddie. I... I'm, I'm so sorry to bother you. Nonsense. You look just the same. That's not so, and we both know it. Eddie, please, could you help me find my son, Jimmy? I understand that they brought him here. Why? Uh, someone was beat up. His store was destroyed, and there was reason to believe your son may have had something to do with it, so we had to bring him down here and question him. Mr. Stein? Yeah. No, Eddie. No, he couldn't have had anything to do with something like that. Believe me, Eddie. Thanks to looking at you, believing you was always the easiest thing in the world, Molly. Well, I'm telling you the truth. So you believe me now. Okay. How'd you get down here? I came in a cab. I'll drive you home. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bring the Phillips boy out, will you, please? Right away, sir. <laughs> I heard about your wife's death. I'm sorry, Eddie. I liked Mary Kate a lot. Well, thank you, Molly. It was a long time ago. I can't tell you what it means to me to see you again. I just can't tell you. Me too. I think I remember your husband. His name was Vic, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was a prize fighter. I think he used to be a, uh, a middleweight or something, wasn't he? All right, Harvey. You can let me go now? Yeah. What's Vic doing these days, Molly? Hey, where's the kid? You got him out, huh? Yes, uh, he's downstairs. Eddie Riker? It is you, ain't it? Little Eddie Riker? Well, 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 look at you! Hello, Vic. Long time? Yeah, yeah. How come you brought him here, huh? Oh, Vic. He brought us home from the station. The least you can say is thank you. He helped Jimmy. He kept him out of jail. Yeah, Molly's right. Thanks a lot, Eddie. Hey, you want a brew? No, thanks, Vic. I'd like to ask you a question, if I may. What do you know about Jimmy's activities? Enough. He's all right. Say, uh, 
What is this, a social or an official visit? It's a little of both. Molly tells me that she uh, works and she has trouble keeping track of your boy. Maybe it'd be a good idea if you had a talk with him before he gets into real trouble. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So, you made lieutenant, huh? Molly and me, we're, we're real proud of you. Ain't we, Molly? Vic. <sighs> eighteen years, eighteen years it's been. Now look at you, you got the blue suit, the shiny shoes, bars on your shirt. But I got what you really wanted. Her, Molly Clark. She picked me, she picked Vic Phillips over you and all the rest. Then I still got her. Vic, please. Eddie, I am grateful. I mean it. And I'm sorry. Hey, hey, you don't have to apologize for me. Molly, I was glad to be able to do it. Goodbye. Bye. There's a what the hell do you think you are, huh? You invite this guy in here, and all of a sudden, you, I'm a boss. You're apologizing Stop for me. Embarrassing and me. you got no right. You, now you shut up. I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> Somebody stand up and testify there's a protection racket in the air. You, you've got nothing. <laughs> it's got right for our senior pop. I'm never like you here today. Well, when you live most of your life in a neighborhood and you see going down the drain. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You're riding with me today. I'm going back out on the street again. First, I want to find out how Larry Stein's doing. We'll use the squawk box. Come on. See you, see Well, some of us must carry the burden while. Others get to frolic away their lives. Yeah, I've got your <coughs> frolic away their lives. Come on, do I detect a note of bitterness in your voice, Officer Owens? I hope not. I hope not. Because we out in the field who are being shot at and run over and generally uh, taking care of business salute you men behind the desk who have freed us to conduct ourselves in such a manner. Do me a favor, will you, Terry? What's that? Get off my back. I hate these two weeks in this department. Ah, oh, come on, Chris. You gotta put in your time as a green rookie. We all did. What's happening in Rutgers' old neighborhood? Anything on that protection racket? No, nothing. I guess someone's got to stand up and talk first. No one is willing. Man, they dump on the people in that neighborhood. They beat them, ruin their livelihoods, and nobody down there wants to do anything about it. They do. Those people down there know who they're paying off. Why are they protecting those hoods? Chris, I don't think anyone is protecting any hoods. They're protecting themselves, their families. There's a lot more to lose than just money. And we can't do anything about it. Well, they think we can't, and that's why they're not talking. Later. Thanks. Roy? Here, split this up, all right? Wait a minute, come here. Buy yourself a trip around the world, kid. Right. Thanks, man. I didn't do much. What are you talking about? You were terrific. You play cheeky for us and allow yourself to get caught by the cops while we got away clean? He's gonna do just fine. You did real good, Jimmy. You know, you're gonna be making collections for us before long, and then we'll start cutting you in on everything. Ginger. What happened to Art Harrison? He sold out to me five years ago. My name's Joe. How are you, Joe? Forgive me, folks. I'm Eddie Riker. I'm a police lieutenant. I used to live in this neighborhood. I walked a beat right outside that door. Can anyone here tell me anything about what happened across the street yesterday? Hello, Eddie. Sam, I was just coming to talk to you after I finished here. I figured that. You figured what it was I was going to talk to you about? I told you, Eddie, I didn't see anybody. Sam, in all the years I've known you, you've never lied to me. That's right. Well, then why are you lying now, or at least not telling the whole truth? 
you scared? Scared? Me? An old man like me ain't got no enemies. What's there to be scared about? Protection, for one thing. Are you paying any protection money? To who? For what? What do I have to protect? Joe, how about you? Nope. I got no troubles, and I don't want no troubles. I've been asking a lot of people a lot of questions. Nobody knows anything. Nobody's scared. Nobody's paying protection. Nobody cares. What's happened to you people since I used to be around here? Well, you're not around here anymore, little Eddie Riker. So why don't you knock it off and go back to wherever it is you come from? How about you, Phillips? You know anything about what happened to Larry Stein? If I knew, why should I tell you? I'm having a little trouble. Everyone is scared. You didn't used to scare easy. I figured maybe you'd be the exception. You figured right. You're smart, little Eddie Riker. Smart enough to wear that gun when you come around here asking foolish questions. You're real bright. Yes, sir. Well, he's a big mouth, Eddie. Don't you pay no attention to him. You're right about me not scaring easy. How about you? Here, Sam. Nothing. We've got older, is all. Excuse me, Lieutenant. We just got a call from the hospital. I'll be back. Jill, say how Stein is doing. She said he's pretty serious, but he's uh, he's anxious to talk to you. Five minutes, Lieutenant. That's all. Harry, I'm glad you came. You don't look too bad, Larry. How do you feel? How should I feel? All cut up inside and out. You found out anything yet? No, nobody knows anything. Not even Sam, only a half a block away in his newsstand. Can you tell me anything? It was Mac calling and his bums. Who's Mac calling? <laughs> no good, Mac. He and his hoodlums have taken over the whole neighborhood. I figured it was something like that. Protection. Everybody. The salute. The cleaners. He even told Sam. And if they don't pay, they get their store wrecked or beat up like you? Thanks, Larry. Uh, you've given me a starting point. That's more than anyone else would. The people there are my friends. Me, uh, I got nothing to lose anymore. You hang on, you're gonna be all right. How's he doing? He looks stronger. Strong isn't a word, I'd say powerful. You know how much guts it took that man to tell me what he did? This is Riker, I want an APB sent out on a Mac Corlin. He's probably got a record, I want you to look him up and get the vitals on him. Give instructions, he is to be considered dangerous. Mac Corlin, I want this man, I want him fast. That manager is real hard nose. He won't even talk to you. He just laughed when I said you want to see him. Maybe we ought to soften his nose up for him then. You know, if we do our thing right, I guarantee in a couple of days he won't be laughing. He'll be paying. Through the nose. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? Huh? What are we gonna do? Look at his underground garage. You're not gonna burn the place down, are you? Oh, come on, don't talk stupid, kid. What good is the place to us if it's burnt down? What we gotta do is we gotta find a time when everybody's home and there are enough cars in there to make it worth our while. We're gonna need enough stuff to, to blow a couple of them. When one goes, it'll set off the next, it'll go like a string of firecrackers. And I'll tell you something else. 
after his tenants start pulling out, his nose is going to start lighting up like a neon dollar sign. I know. What's your problem? Well, supposing the fire spreads and goes up from the garage, huh? Them underground garages are all fireproof. <clears throat> Besides, we got to phone in the alarm before it gets out of hand. Told you, kid, we don't want to burn the whole place down. Just a couple of cars, that's all. Hey, Mac, uh, sometimes an underground parking place has got an attendant on duty. Yeah, so? What's the matter, you can't handle one lousy watchman? Hey, Mac, I want out. What'd you say? Look at the attendant. I mean, we might kill him. Or he might get hurt like Mr. Stein. I... Not me. Kid, come on, it's too late. You know too much already. It's okay, you got my word. I'm not gonna talk. Come on, you know that. All right. Look, we believe you, right? Huh? We believe you. It'll be better if I know now. All right, let's forget about calling. Who tore into you like this? Who busted you up? Jimmy, please, tell Lieutenant Riker. I told you, I don't know. We'll find him. The doctor said you can take him home, Mrs. Phillips. He'll talk to you before you leave. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant, could I see you for a minute, please? Mike just called. He said the stakeout that you put on the Corlin apartment paid off. Corlin's there now. Yeah! Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Who is it? Police, open up. We know you're in there, Corlin. Open it. We got a warrant here. You don't open it, we're gonna break it in. Break it. All right. Cover him. Got it. Looks like we got a mad dog here. Please, Larry, don't do this to yourself. Don't do it to the people you live with. Talk to the man, Mr. Stein. Tell him about uh, how close we used to be. You know how it's gonna be when you get out of here. We'll get to see more of one another. Keep that saw you have from our shut. Don't open it again, you hear me? Larry, I want you to stop and think for a minute. Think what you told me right here in this room. Think about the people, the way they live down there. Paying their hard-earned blood to scum like this. Identify him, Larry. Give us a statement. That's what we need to put him away. Get him out of here, thank you. Back to the precinct. Nah, no, get him out of here. Throw him out the street with the rest of the garbage. Right so long, Mr. Stein. Hope you feel better. Move it! Had to let him go, Larry. I had to turn him loose on the other people in the neighborhood. Without your identification, I had nothing. I thought you were tougher than that. No, hey, tough I'm not. I'm just beginning to find that out. What about the protection setup? What about calling? You gonna sit there and let that flourish? I don't know from no protection, and I don't know from no calling. I see. <sighs> well, at least you're getting better, Larry. Eddie. In Two, maybe three weeks, I'll be getting out of here. I have to go back there to live. 
I don't envy you. I'm glad I don't live there. I wouldn't want to live there myself, not the way you people do. See you around, Sam. I'd like to talk to you some more, Sam. Sure, Eddie. How do you like it if I arrange a little police protection for you and, let's say, a couple of other businessmen for a little while? Why do I need something like that? I got no enemies. I'm sure you don't, Sam, but be nice to have a couple of police officers around after you've agreed to give us a statement and testify. Testify? For who? For yourself, Sam. I want you to testify against Mac Collin and the bunch of goons he's got for legmen. I'm trying to help you people. Don't you understand that? For allowing yourselves to be shoved around by a handful of hoods. There's more of you than there are of them. How can you let them walk all over this whole neighborhood like this? You're wrong, Eddie. This is still a nice place to live. It stinks. It's no one person's fault. It's everyone's. You don't want any help, you're going to get it anyhow. I'm coming back, do you hear me? As often as it takes to get this place like it was. Molly, are you all right? <laughs> sure. Everything's fine. I... <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Sit down, sit down. You're here because you want to be here, Molly. You don't need any reason other than that. Eddie, do you like your life? I mean... Are you happy with yourself? I suppose so. There's a lot of things I could have wished different. Mary, Kate, and the baby, I miss them both. I miss them a lot. Outside of that, I'm fairly happy. I have a good life here. It could have been you and me, Eddie. Now, Molly. Jimmy. Jimmy could have been your son, our son. There's a lot of things that could have been in this life, Molly. I loved you, Eddie. Did you know that? I really did. Not really. Remember it for what it was. What it really was. We were good together. <laughs> sure we were. We had some wild times. We wanted the same things. We liked the same things. Do you remember that dance contest we won? And they gave us a $5 bill, and you tore it in half, and then we identified ourselves by the serial number on the half we had. Those were wonderful years, Molly, and we were full of each other. But it wasn't love. I knew that when Mary Kate came along, and you did when you saw Vic. He was beautiful. He was all I wanted, then. Well, he's still the same man, Molly. He's a little hurt, stepped on, but he's the same man. Maybe he's hurting inside just as much as you are. He is, Eddie. I know that. He needs you, Molly. You're the only thing he has in his life, you and Jimmy. Well, I guess I'd better go home. You still have your half of the five dollars. Uh, no, Molly, I don't think so. <laughs> I found it yesterday. Seeing you again reminded me of it. I looked for it. Oh. 
Hey, you want to prove, son? Thank you. How's it going today, Jimmy? Okay. I, uh... I wish you'd tell me who done it. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, come on. You got somebody mad at you and they beat up on you. But you, you gotta tell me who. I'm, I'm your father. What for? <sighs> Even if I knew, what could you do? Well, I could do plenty, you hear? Plenty! I could take care of my own. Excuse me, I'm going to bed. Good night, Mom. Good night, Jimmy. Rest well. <sighs> oh. Vic, please. Can't you leave the boy alone? He's not going to tell you, even if he knows. Oh, he knows, all right. Well, suppose he does. Put yourself in his place. Would you tell? No. But I'd do something. Get myself healed up, and I'd go after those monkeys. I'd take them one at a time or in pairs, but I'd take them apart. But not him. He's not me. Not even like me. He's gutless. You know who he's got to thank for that? You're trying to make another little Eddie Riker out of him. Well, that wouldn't be such a bad idea. <laughs> Well, how come you didn't marry him, then, huh? Tell me, how come? Vic, please, you Answer hurt me. me! Why don't you marry him and ruin his life instead of mine, huh? Nobody ruined your life but you! When you were a boxer, you lost because you weren't good enough! You blamed everybody but yourself! You shut up! It's the truth! You're a bully and you're a drunk! And you never even took the time to raise your own boy! And now he's hurt, and he's in trouble. And who do you blame for that? Not yourself. Oh, no, you blame me. Well, maybe you're right about Eddie Riker. Maybe I should have married him! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, please, thank Eddie, uh, Lieutenant Riker, for me. Okay. Jimmy, has he been found yet? Uh, no, ma'am, but I don't think it'll be too long, okay? Thank you. Thank you. do. How could a man do that to someone he loves? Vic, do you know how long it's been since we said we loved each other? Safety was rusted shut in the on position. These bullets look to be 10 or 15 years old. I don't think you could have done much damage with this thing. It's against the law to carry it, however. Now, look, Jimmy, I know how you feel, but to want to kill someone, that is no solution to any problem, and to try to kill your father, no good. What do you know about it, huh? I know what it would do to your mother. 
I know what it would do to you. Look, you think I didn't want to lay into him when he raked me over the coals up there in that apartment? I know how you feel. I'm no angel. But I'll tell you something. There isn't a sorrier man in the world right now than you're dead. I know that for a fact. You think so, huh? He's not a bad man, Jimmy. He doesn't hate anyone, really, except himself. Nothing has turned out well for him. How do you think he feels knowing his son wants to kill him? He hit my mother. He knocked her on the ground. He's hit her before, OK, but this time he almost killed her. He will kill her. If I don't, if someone doesn't stop him. I doubt that, Jimmy, and I think you do, too. You know, you've been through an awful lot yourself lately, and if you'll forgive me, you're not thinking straight. There has to be something to keep two people together as long as your mom and dad have been married. In spite of all the angry words and the hitting, there has to be something, Jimmy. I think it's love. <sighs> have you cooled off enough to go back home now, do you think? Yeah. Well, you better go on then, son. I think they both need you. <clears throat> Lieutenant. Yeah? That neighborhood's just as rotten as you've been saying it is. Would you like to tell me about it? All of it? Yes, I would. Sharp. Say hello to a few friends. Good grief, Danko. Why didn't you say something? You could have told me. We asked your young officer not to, Eddie. If he did, we figured you might not come, right? Larry, you look fine. How are you? You all right? All of us feel all right, thanks to you. To Eddie Riker, who, thank God, came from our neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Now, Danko, that's what I was telling you about. There's nothing like getting out on the street and meeting the people you work for. 
Makes you feel like you really have a job. All right, come on, I'll buy you a ginger. Yeah. Yeah.